Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather coming at you with another video. In this update, we're going to be talking about two tropical disturbances with an area in the Caribbean south of Jamaica and then also another area just north of the Bahamas. So before I do get started, if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload about five videos a week to keep you updated. And I do ask you to share this video with your friends and family on social media. All right, so let's get right to it. Let's kind of delve into the details. Here's the latest update from the National Hurricane Center. You can see Iota here uh, pushing off uh, the Central American coast. It had devastating impacts for Nicaragua and Honduras. My heart goes out for them, but we can finally say goodbye to Iota as this will push offshore and just dissipate out in the Pacific. But now back behind it, we have another area of a broad area of disturbed weather where the National Hurricane Center has highlighted a 30% chance of development. It is a broad area and it's festering down in south of Jamaica. And it has a small chance of becoming tropical as it just kind of meanders in this area for the next several days. And we also have another area, a non-tropical area. This is the feature that we've kind of been highlighting and the National Hurricane Center has gone ahead and put a 20% chance of this possibly developing into a non-tropical, maybe subtropical type feature, uh, you know, next week and getting pushed off to uh, the Northeast, but this will bring back some more uh, rain for the Bahamas. So let's kind of, take a look at the big picture. Uh, this is an interesting map. Here is the map is showing all the different landfalls of all the hurricanes and tropical storms this year. And you can see there's actually been 30 different impacts on land from this season. It's been an extremely uh, busy year all the way from Bertha to Iota. And you can kind of zoom in, you can see like Ada, it made four different landfalls at each separate times, and this is all laid out. So unfortunately, the highest and the strongest storm was just the last storm. It was 155 mile per hour as it came ashore. That was Iota. Uh, but then we had Laura, there was a 150 mile per hour storm that moved into uh, Louisiana. And then, of course, we had Ada uh, just recently. It was 140 miles an hour. But you can see where the wind speed was at uh, different land impacts going throughout the, the entire season. And some of these storms had two separate land packs, uh, like Laura and um, Zeta had two, and then Ada had four. So uh, it's been an extremely busy year, and it looks... Uh, to continue or at least uh, have some tropical development to uh, talk about as we go into the second half of November and the main culprit you would think here's the latest uh, sea surface temperatures as the 18th and you can see here's the main development region where we typically see tropical storm activity but that has really not been the case this year it's all been closer into closer into land and that's why we've had so many impacts on land this year than other years. And you can see, you would think with all the different storms, we'd have some upwelling uh, to deal with. And we really haven't had it. I mean, look, these are well above average temperatures for much of the Caribbean, much of the Gulf of Mexico, much of the, the Southeast. So there's not much cooler waters to speak of because it's been so warm uh, over the United States and we've had a lot of deep ocean water to deal with too. So I showed you there was, even when uh, Iota was coming on board, one of the main reasons why I was able to get so strong is the, the, the water was uh, 26 degrees Celsius, even 150 meters down in the ocean. So even with upwelling, right, putting some of that water, that's mixedine. It's still able to bring us above average uh, sea surface temperatures. And this just amplifies the pattern and it could bring more tropical storms as we extend back going into uh, November. And another culprit is the uh, vertical, vertical velocity index. So you have to have rising motion air to have some sort of tropical development, or at least an, that's an element of it. You can see where we have sinking air is over the Pacific, but that's over the over water. And it's that's where the La Nina is uh, happening out there. But if you kind of zoom in, 
uh, to the, the Caribbean, you can see where these arrows are. That's where we get that lift. And it's basically kind of a bullseye over the, over, over the Caribbean, unfortunately, that uh, we see uh, a tropical uh, systems or even uh, still developing in that area. And, we've, and if we extend it even after Thanksgiving, this is from the 28th through the 3rd, we still see an area of, of, of upward rising motion air. So this whole area is still conducive, if not forming into a tropical storm, you would still have that those tropical like downpours, daily like daily like downpours in this area because the environment is still uh, capable of it. So let me kind of show you the bigger picture. Here's the next two weeks of the United States, and you can see there's not much cold air to speak of. This is this is a, a from the 23rd, 20, from the 27th. This is over uh, Thanksgiving, for the, the next uh, six to 10 days, well above average temperatures and even amplifies further uh, after Thanksgiving. So we've got a good chunk of the central and eastern part of the United States well above normal. The only areas that are going to be uh, below normal, if, if normal, is the, the Pacific Northwest, where we've got uh, some uh, some uh, rain showers moving in, and there are snow uh, in the higher elevations. And th the reason why this is, we have what they call a zonal pattern that's happening over the United States. You can see the jet stream. This is Friday. Here's the jet streak. Look how flat it is. That is not a winter type setup. That is just bringing Pacific air over the United States and just it warms and the, and the jet stream is not able to buckle. It only buckles subtle for a day or two, but then it retreats back and turns flat again. So this just amplifies the pattern underneath, causes that divergence. So you have the mixing of, you know, warmer, warmer than average temperatures of the United States. You have the, uh, you know, well above average sea surface temperatures, not just at the surface, but even down deep in the ocean and then you, can, you have the vertical velocity index showing upward rising motion air in that area. So it's natural that we would see some sort of tropical storm development coming out of that region. Now here, let's zoom in why that is and where it's going to happen. Uh, this is a, I, I put this in two frames. This is from now into the 21st, which is Saturday. And then beyond that, uh, I put it out another frame a week beyond that to the 29th. And so if we kind of zoom into this area, this is the broad area of low pressure that looks to uh, just kind of fester around uh, the Caribbean, bringing more uh, heavier rains to, uh, you know, Panama, to, to Guadalupe to uh, Costa Rica and back into Nicaragua, unfortunately. So this is just a broad area and I'll show you this here in a little bit. But if we extend the range here, we can see that broad area, but this is through the 29th and, that, and after the 22nd, you can see this other feature that we talked about in the Bahamas start to bubble up and bec become, it's a non-tropical low. So if this does actually form, this would probably form a lift northeast and probably wouldn't be a threat to land, but in the early on it would be bring some rain showers and thunderstorms for the Bahama, for the Bahamas. But if this thing actually kind of just this broad area just kind of festers uh, open the open waters of the Caribbean, given that dynamics coming into play with the zonal type pattern that's in the United States, it's not 100 percent out of the question that this could uh, try to uh, develop into a, a stronger system because this is just kind of hanging around all week and maybe possibly lift uh, upward. I mean, it's not 100%, you can't 100% rule that out because uh, given dy dy dynamics over the United States with the zonal pattern, and then if you remember back in 85, we had Hurricane Kate this time of year and they were still able to uh, be a, 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 a major storm in the Gulf of Mexico. It actually formed on November 19th. Today's the 18th. So it formed in Cuba and it was able to get into uh, the loop eddy into the Gulf of Mexico, uh, really develop and, and be a powerful hurricane over the Gulf of Mexico. And then it went into Florida by the 21st and then it finally fizzled out over Georgia on the, on the 22nd. So it's not 100% out of the question, given the zonal flow platter and over the United States, that this potential can't be 100% uh, ruled out in this type of environment, like maybe later on down the road. But closer in, 
I kind of separate this in two features so you can kind of fully understand what's happening here. Here is on Wednesday. This is this morning. Here's the latest GFS. And I'm also showing you the European at the same time frames, right? 12Z, 12Z. And this is the water precipitation index of the amount of the potential of water in the atmosphere at that given time. So you can see this broad area low pressure with iota finally moving offshore and dissipating. But by, back behind it, we've got that area of disturbed weather lagging behind, bringing some rain showers into uh, Costa Rica and Panama. And you can kind of see this playing out in the, uh, the precipital water vapor energy. But as we extend to Thursday, so this development tries to start developing because as this moves offshore, as we've seen time and time again, that one of the features moves offshore, it just opens the door because it's not pulling against each other. It opens the door for, because this area is still conducive for tropical storm development. So once IOTA moves out, it allows this feature to try to get its act together, right? But it's so close uh, to land that it may not be able to do it and just kind of fester over this area. But also at the same time, it's broad, remember? So the, the, the water uh, spreads out because it's not consolidated or congealed in a solid low 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 level center so with this i do expect like say for in places in jamaica where it's going to be sunny today but by tomorrow as this broad area low pressures kind of gets its act together we're going to start seeing those tropical rains move back into the island and this will actually spread into uh, Cancun, Cozumel, uh, uh, down in these areas into Belize again, and bringing more rain into uh, Nicaragua and, uh, and Honduras. And as this moves in into Friday, we kind of see kind of the same thing. We kind of see that same area, broad area, low pressure, just extending the precipitation outward. And this continues the tropical rains over this area, kind of the same areas. And we see the same thing on Saturday. So I don't really expect this to form into possibly a tropical storm over the next couple of days, but it is going to bring uh, added rainfall to this region that it's not, you know, this area really can't take any more rainfall, but a broad area, it's not going to be able to consolidate a low level center, but it will just spread out its rains further than a normal, you know, tropical storm or a low level center would be centered in one isolated area this is going to be just a broad feature so you can see some a lot of the heavier rain just extend outward getting into uh, costa rica so i do expect a lot of rain places like uh, costa rica over the next uh, you know five to, to seven days and if we extend it out to sunday you can kind of see the same thing this area low pressure uh, tries to push back north again and just stay in the same area and keeping that those elevated rain showers here's you know two three inch rainfall rates per hour so this available potential energy in the atmosphere would still be conducive for tropical downpours you know isolated scattered tropical downpours over this region all the way through the weekend um, and if we continue in, into next week uh, by Monday, you can still see that broad area low pressure down in the Caribbean bringing above average uh, precipitation for the same, basically the same areas from Panama to, to, to uh, Costa Rica, down on the coast of Nicaragua and Honduras, spreading into uh, J Jamaica. And then if we zoom up north by that time, Sunday and Monday, you look at the look at the little hook. Right here's that developing broad area low pressure that's highlighted right now. This could try to get its act together and develop in a trop subtropical type feature, but this would actually move safely away uh, from the United States. But again, if we even extend it out even further, this is by Tuesday, and I'll stop it here. But you can see that low pressure is just still kind of in the same area. So the longer this thing sits over the open waters, the longer time frame. And look at the moisture trying to extend northward, right? So that is one sign why that one model is showing some of the ensemble members trying to push this northwards. Because if so, in the extended period, Thanksgiving week, if this low pressure is able to still be out into the center of this area just south of Jamaica, it could try to get its act together 
and uh, form a tropical feature at that time frame and then propagate uh, northward. So that is definitely something that could be on the table on the extended range. But beforehand, we're going to be dealing with those uh, tr uh, daily tropical downpours uh, throughout the Caribbean. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Uh, I appreciate you, uh, you know, liking my channel. Definitely like this video. Leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to catch me in the next video, Wire Protect You, before and after the storm.